The pictures of swinging wooden doors, batwing partitions, sawdust floors, and rows of dusty bottles adorning illuminated shelves are often the first things that come to mind when we think of iconic saloons from the Old West. The general imagination has a somewhat idealized view of these watering spots, especially as a result of Western movies and television shows. This is largely due to the influence of Western media. However, the reality of saloons in the Old West often dramatically contrasted with their portrayals in films. In this video, we will take a more in-depth look at what saloons in the American frontier era actually looked like by analyzing historical records, photographs, artwork, and accounts from people who were there at the time. So let's get started. Design and Execution of Construction Saloons were not impromptu, ramshackle constructions that were cobbled together overnight, as is commonly believed by the general public. Many of them had sturdy construction and walls that were up to 10 feet high and made of wood or stone. The majority of saloons created in established towns did not have open floor designs. Rather, they had distinct rooms for gambling, dancing, drinking, and possibly even offering little pleasures like baths or barbers to lure rich miners and travelers. As an alternative to the swinging wooden half doors that are typically represented, crude barriers made of scrap wood and canvas might be used to partition sections. Typical front entrances included a pair of full-sized doors. They occasionally included windows either above or flanking the doors to allow natural light to enter. Instead of a single long wooden counter running along one wall, there were multiple elaborate mahogany bars running along opposite walls, each with rows of stools facing inward. For the customer's convenience, brass footrails ran underneath. At night, illumination was provided by lamps that ran on kerosene or gas, with daylight coming in through the windows that were described. The floors were often made of wooden planks and frequently featured raised wooden platforms in the corners or down the center of the room to place tables, dance, or play games such as pharaoh. The layout of saloons in sparsely populated boom towns and mining camps sometimes resembled that of a Google Doc. It consisted of a single open space rather than a number of different partitions. Despite this, they attempted to make an impression with polished wood features and they demonstrated the economic success and tenacity of their owners to build permanent fixtures in otherwise transitory settings. Customers who took their time and brought friends and family members along to try their luck were the key to the saloon's continuous success and handsome growth throughout the years. Interior Furnishings Instead of the dingy, sparse interiors that are commonly pictured, early photographs and artwork from the time period reveal saloons filled to the brim with luxury furnishings and decor. The polished brass fittings comprised magnificent chandeliers as well as sconces along the walls that held kerosene lanterns, along with promotional placards and colored bottles, cigars, chews, glasses, and bottles of alcoholic beverages graced the backlit shelves that were located behind bars. Walls were covered in wallpaper in the Victorian era style, which was sometimes printed artistically and had stenciling or marbling around the edges and places of interest. Mirrors were hung behind and between the bars so that the inside appeared brighter and more spacious. Walls between the rows of shelves were livened up with vibrant paintings or sketches of scantily clad dancing girls, and ornate brass-topped wood bars reinforced the impressions of stability and affluence. In place of floors covered in sawdust, beautiful oriental carpets were used to soften the working spaces, and spittoons were provided for discreetly catching tobacco expectorations. Private alcove seating rooms and lounges offered overstuffed and fringed velvet settees and armchairs for speaking quietly or making business dealings out of earshot of the casual population. These places were located away from the main seating areas, Card players and drinkers had entertainment into the wee hours of the morning thanks to the table's immaculate linens and lamp chimneys, which enclosed candles or small kerosene lamps and provided light. Pianos, string ensembles, and later graph phones provided musical entertainment that encouraged celebration. The profits obtained allowed for continuous improvements and the replacement of worn furnishings in order to maintain the reputation and comfort of the establishment. 
decorative elements on the surface, in contrast to the bare pictures of plain plank buildings that are commonly associated with saloons, many of these establishments featured elaborate barkeeps and signs advertising their trade and social atmosphere. The names of drinking establishments were written in gilded letters, and vibrant artwork lured customers to enter via frequently artistically framed doors. For instance, a restored barkeep from Franklin, Nevada, that dates back to the 1870s, features rippling waves, ships, and anchors that allude to the town's proximity to the mineral richness of the Comstock load and the traffic across the sea. Aside from the visual attractiveness they offered, barkeeps also served functional reasons, such as protecting the interior fabrics of the establishment from the sun's fading rays and preventing boisterous patrons from throwing rocks. When joined end-to-end -end and overlapping one another, they formed continuous canopies that shielded pavements from the sun and the rain. In contrast to the temporary nature of mining camps, the installation of these features, together with potted palms and flower baskets that hung from the ceiling, created the image of stability and prosperity, standards for sanitation and risk management. Historical sources reveal unusually stringent standards of cleanliness in successful saloons, which runs counter to the common perception of these establishments as filthy holes overflowing with spilled wine and tobacco juice. An old drinker's almanac included advice, keep it clean as a parlor. Regular sweeping and washing kept the timber floors and fittings in good condition. Zinc line troughs were effective at cleaning up spills, while brass cuspidors captured expectorations to make emptying quicker and easier. The constant washing of glasses was made possible by the running water, and the thick glass preserved the liquid stocks. On the premises, there was a stringent ban on the use of firearms, as well as a prohibition against fighting and disruptive behavior. Rule violators faced instant expulsion or incarceration, thanks to the presence of paid bouncers or local law officers brought in to maintain order during busy periods. It was imperative for well-ordered saloons catering to miners and travelers who hoped to strike it rich to have reputations prioritizing hospitality over violence, or they risked losing the business of sensible customers. The reality shattered preconceived images of a rowdy saloon from the Old West. The key to being successful was to establish safe havens away from the elements where intrepid merchants and diligent prospectors could relax in a responsible manner. Historically authentic images show that saloons cared as much about their customers' health, safety, and comfort as they did about generating a profit, despite the fact that each business confronted its own particular obstacles during times of raucous boom. In contrast to the dingy watering holes, the saloon's interior, which is visible through the windows, reveals great attention to detail that belies the transient character of the neighboring mining camps. Let's not overlook the role of the saloon or dance hall girl, whose duty was to illuminate the nights of lonesome men yearning for female companionship. Contrary to what many might think, saloon girls seldom engage in prostitution, this was prevalent only within the seediest tier of saloons. Although respectable women often deemed these saloon girls as having fallen, their job was to entertain the guests, singing, dancing, engaging in conversation, and perhaps flirting with them a bit, inducing them to spend more in the bar, fostering drink purchases and game participation. Not all saloons employed saloon girls. For instance, on Dodge City's north side of Front Street, which upheld a respectable reputation, firearms, saloon girls, and gambling were strictly prohibited. Here, music and billiards were featured as the chief amusements to accompany drinking. This brief look at some primary sources demonstrates that romanticized depictions of the Old West have led to inaccurate portrayals of saloons from that era. In point of fact, successful saloons were more like gleaming and well-kept Victorian taverns than they were like rundown shacks. The proprietors spared no cost in making these establishments into elegant gathering spots where customers might find refreshments in addition to hospitality, entertainment, and business opportunities. Popular watering holes were characterized by their meticulous construction, elegant fixtures, stringent hygienic standards, and strict adherence to the law. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button before you go. 
Thanks for watching.